It's always a pleasure to be back. Um, you know, I think everybody knows how much pride I take in um, being a Weaver State Wildcat. Um, obviously, us being able to put this event together is important to not just me, but you know, all the alumni and everybody that was able to be a part of it. And it's, you know, it's always a great time getting together with the guys, you know, past, present, um, and just getting a good run in, you know, chopping it up, sharing each other's company, and um, you know, just just talking about the memories that we had here and. Um, acknowledging the, the history of this program that we've all taken part in. So I'm just happy to be back. Dame, you obviously have a connection with fans worldwide now, but do you feel like you have a different, or you know, what is it that you have connect, uh, pending your connection with Utah fans and Weaver State fans? I mean, it's a, it's a special connection, you know. Um, and it means a lot to me because it's, it's similar to when I go home to Oakland. You know, when I play against the, the Golden State Warriors, when they call my name in, in the starting lineups, you know, the crowd shows me a lot of love. And it's the same when we play for the Jazz. You know, when we play against the Jazz, it's like they say from Weber State and everybody just kind of go crazy out of love. You know, you know it's a, a great level of appreciation on my side because these are the, the people that had this type of appreciation for me before the rest of the world even knew who I was. So, um, you know, I never lose sight of that. And, um, you know, I don't take that for granted. Last year, this event wasn't able to happen due to COVID. How much more significant is it considering what we've been through the past year? Um, well, I think the, the last one we did was in 19. And, um, you know, COVID hit in 2020. Tough year. You know, it's been a tough year this year as well uh, for a lot of people. Um, and, and coming out of that a little bit and being able to, to do something like this, you know, um, and come together, we uh, do it every other year. So people go back to their families and, you know, to, to work into their home cities and you don't know what their every day is you know you don't know the struggles that they go through every day and uh, many time that you can do something like this and um, just bring happiness you know shine a light on people with that you know they walk these halls and they see pictures like that of themselves and remember you know the, the great times that they had you know the college experience and they can share that with other guys who, who have that in common with them so um, because of the kind of uh, year and a half that it's been, it's even more important to be able to come together and just have have fun, you know, just do something good. You've had a busy summer with putting out your new album and then also working with Team USA. Why was it important for you to come out in this year and host the event again? I mean, it's, I pretty much went from the bubble last season, shortened summer right into another season, and then, uh, you know, a playoff run, right into USA Basketball. Like you said, I, I put the, the album out and, you know, it was like, I'm already not gonna get much of a summer, you know, so I might as well um, continue to do the things that I wanna do as well. You know, the music is something that, you know, is a passion of mine. And also coming back and, and being a part of this, you know, not letting it get too far away from, from us. If we didn't do it this year now, instead of two years, it's three years. And, um, you know, I didn't wanna miss that opportunity. The new album is dropping tonight, right? Uh, it dropped last night. Non- oh, it was 9 p.m. last night. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. So, what did, when we, <laughs> apologies. I thought I saw I August 20th on your Instagram. It but was August 20th, but that's August 20th basically on the East Coast. So, maybe gotcha. on the East okay, Coast, okay. 9 p.m. On the apologies. Okay, what what is your favorite song on the album? I don't, I don't really have a favorite, you know. Like, I think every time I listen through it, it's like another one that sticks out to me. I'm like, this might be my favorite. But it's like, when you put out songs, it's like it's like your kids. Like, you can't, you love this one on Monday, and then that one acting up on Tuesday, and you love the other one. And it's like, none of them are your favorite, but you know, every day it's like, I get along better with the different ones. Which one were you getting along with today? Uh, today I was getting along with, if you know, you know. Dame, you're only the second Weaver State athlete to get an Olympic medal. Um, what was that like for? What was that whole experience like for you personally to be able to do that? It was a great experience. I think it was a little bit limited because of COVID. We didn't get the, the full thing. Uh, couldn't really leave the hotel, attend any other other events. Uh, but it was a great experience going through the opening ceremonies, um, going to the Olympic Village and meeting all the the other athletes from different countries, different sports and. Just to walk out and, and represent our country and represent my family and my neighborhood and you know everything that I come from. Um, before I got there, it was like it wasn't really a big deal to me. And 
then once I got out there and I saw the pride that the other countries had and how bad they wanted to beat the Americans and how much it meant, it kind of leveled up my sense of pride, you know, and how how much it meant to me. And I realized why, you know, being able to participate in something like that was important. So it was a, a great experience. Um, you know, it was different. And, um, you know, when I got back, it's like people acknowledge the fact that I won a gold medal more than anything else. So it's like it kind of puts it in perspective of um, the, the appreciation people have for, you know, sacrificing that time and that, you know, going away from the family for that long and representing the country. Ogden is a very different place than uh, Oakland or even Portland. I mean, what do you think of when you think of Ogden as a, as a city and, and, you know, I guess this area, Utah in general? I think the the number one thing that comes to mind is just, like, the transition from, like, being a kid to being an adult. You know, I got to, I got to Utah. I was 17 years old. And, um, you know, I was used to, like, I get stuck at practice, call my mom, I need a ride. Right? If I'm hungry, I call my dad, I need some money. I'm, you know, Or my grandmother or my brother, it was always somebody to lean on. And then when I got here, it was like, I don't have a car, I don't really got no money like that. Like, I had to like manage my time better, I had to manage money, I had to, to find a way you know, to get things done. And, um, it kind of forced you to, to become a man. And then you got class, you got practice, want to get better at, at basketball. So it was just so many things I had to juggle and nobody was there to kind of hold my hand through it. I had to figure it out. So um, I, I remember those times like it was like it was yesterday, you know. So um, anytime I, I touch down in Ogden and I'm just driving through, I'm like, man, I remember my first party I went to was down there, you know. I remember a party got busted down there. It was just like, <laughs> I'm riding through here having all these memories going to, to New Day. Uh, I got my first tattoo at the mall, you know, so uh, it was, I just think about all those things, you know, just that, the progress from, you know, 17 to, to 21, where it was like, I, I came here one person and I left a completely different person, so um, that's what I think of the most. What's the, the message that you share with some of the players who are on the team currently here? I try not to uh, come at them with all the answers, you know. I think it's, when I come here, it's like, you know, we, we do events like this and they're playing my music. And when we're doing the autograph signing, I'm sitting right here and then it's like everybody else. And I never wanted to be like, you know, I'm, I'm just everything and I'm the only thing for Weaver State because I'm not. So... I just give them their space, you know, they'll come up, they'll ask questions, and um, when I do speak, I'll just make sure I speak on the program, like, just, I was a program player, I wasn't like Damian Lillard and the Weaver State Wildcats, it was like, I represented the program, and I was invested in the program, and what, you know, Coach Ray and Coach Duff and Coach Gardner was, was kind of preaching, and what they was pushing on us, I embraced what that meant to be a part of this program, and everybody before me did the same thing so it's like when I speak to them I'm just telling them like you know it means something to to have Weaver State across your chest and everybody can't be in the NBA everybody won't go pro but like while you're here you're a part of something special you know because of what this program is is about and you know if you embrace that and work hard and do what's asked of you and, and be a true Weaver State Wildcat you know be what this program means then whatever it is that you do want to do, you'll have a better chance because of it. You know, I had um, a, a NBA scout tell me, um, you know, they knew that I, when they came to watch me play, they knew that I would be an NBA player, but they knew that, you know, sometimes my team would struggle because they knew I was going to make the right play. And I was going to try to do the right things, even in times where I probably should have tried to take over or keep the ball or, you know, things like that because I was such a, a program player. but. It worked out for me in the long run, you know, but when I was here, I was I was just dialed in on being a program player. And that's that's the biggest message that I, you know, I try to share with you. Uh, Dame, you had your name in, in the rumor in the mill a little bit more maybe than you ever have in your career. I think I even heard a kid hassle you about it tonight. In the for real? Uh, <laughs> I, 
But uh, what, what, what's been your mentality on, on maybe dealing with that as a kind of a different part of, of being pro than maybe you've had in the past? I mean, it's, it's definitely different because, you know, the, the rumors start in the social media era. So you can say something and it can be received a thousand different ways. And then, you know, people just put a quote out and, you know, they might just be, uh, what do they call it, being a troll. They might just be trolling, but people believe it. You know, people believe this stuff, man. You get to a position where it's like, do I defend myself or do I just say nothing? And for me, when I'm hearing stuff that's just not the facts, I'm going to say, you know, I didn't say that. But some things I just got to let it be said. You know, I just got to sit back. I know what the truth is. I know where I stand. And, you know, it's not my duty to make the public know, like, it's not my, my job to make them aware of what that is, you know? so um, it definitely, it's definitely been different, and um, I feel like I've handled it like I, like I handle everything, you know, I, I just let it happen, I let people talk, um, and I just stay true to who I am, and I stand on that, you know, if I say something, I stand on what I said, and, uh, you know, that's that, so, I mean, it's, it is what it is at this point. The 2021 Hall of Fame Weaver State class was announced this week, and you are obviously on it. Um, what does it mean to you to have your name etched in as a Weaver State all-time great? It's, it's an honor. You know, I think you know, when I was here, I was always just looking into the history of the, the program, you know, like looking back at Bruce Collins and David Patton and Harold the Show Arsenal, just like all the, the different eras of players that, that came through here and had a, a huge impact. So to, you know, to be in the Hall of Fame, you know, after coming behind guys like that, you know, it's an honor. Um, and it's, you know, it's not something that everybody gets. You know? so, um, I'm thankful that I'm viewed in that light by this university and that, um, you know, everything that I've done here and, and going forward is, is appreciated on that level. Um, what did you think of this game going down to the last second? I thought it was fun, man. Like when I came out, I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to get too into this game. You know, I'm not taped up. I don't want to get going. You know, I had a, I was dealing with like an injury during the season, and you know, in the Olympics as well. So um, I've been off for like two and a half weeks. So coming out here, I didn't want to try to do too much. I just wanted to chill, have a good time. And then uh, you know, it got down to stretch, and you know, I was like, man, it's getting down to the stretch. I'm going to try to hit a game winner. But, um, you know, uh, Cody hit, got hot. He had some shots. Um, and it was fun. You know, I, I was just happy that it was like a crowd pleaser. You know, it was like every shot, everybody was like, oh, oh. So uh, I think in an event like this, that's what you're looking for. You know, you want to give the fans some excitement. And, you know, I think they would have preferred the way it went other than 80 to 40. You know, so, you know they, got, they got a treat tonight. 